and welcome to FIA Pure Motorsport. On this week's episode, we'll show you the highlight of the hill climb season, the Hill Climb Master in Portugal. We'll take a closer look at the green revolution in truck racing and present you the new historic rally champion, the charismatic Andrea Zippo Zivian. And much, much more from the FIA world of motorsport. The 2021 FIA European Truck Racing Championship comes to a close at Misano Circuit in Italy. The battle for the championships will go down to the wire with three contenders still within theoretical reach of the crown. The big favorite is Hungarian driver Norbert Kisch. He only needs 14 more points to wrap up title number three. Sasha Lenz is 46 points behind Kisch and Adam Lachko 49 points back. As on every race weekend, four races will take place in Misano. Starting from the pole position in race number one, Kish has the race in hand at the start, but championship rival Sasha Lenz is not about to let the Hungarian race off to an easy victory. Going into the first corner, Lenz attacks, but in turn two, Kish gets back around. Then Lenz snaps back to the race lead with a brilliant move. Second is enough for Kish to win the championship. Rene Reinhardt had a lot of contact earlier on and is smoking like mad with all the bodywork flapping around and hitting on his tires. After solving his problem, Reinhardt leads the closely packed midfield. After Jamie Anderson came off the road, the yellow flags are out. Sasha Lenz is correctly slowing down, but Norbert Kish overtakes him on the inside. Under the yellow flag conditions, this is a no-no, therefore he's given a five-second penalty. So he needs to make sure that he is at least five seconds ahead of Jochen Hahn in third position to clinch the title. Norbert Kish is controlling the field. Sasha Lenz and Jochen Hahn are trying to stay close to the leader, waiting for a mistake by Kish and the chance to pass him. While the rest of the field is now widely spread out. Eventually, the Hungarian opens the gap, showing the incredible speed that secured him 10 wins already this season. While in the middle of the field, Shane Brereton and Theo Calvet fight for every inch with a lot of contact. Norbert Kish crosses the finish line first, but just two seconds in front of Sasha Lenz. With seven seconds between Kish and Han, the Hungarian is only demoted by one spot, putting him mathematically out of Lenz's reach and securing the championship with three races to go. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of the team. And, uh, and the last two years, I think what we achieved is uh, is outstanding. So yeah, I'm I'm really proud and really thankful for the team because you know without them, this would not be possible. So yeah, I'm really happy that we have the team championship as well, and uh, and uh, and the overall you know for the drivers champions as well. It's uh, I'm just so happy and uh, uh, you know I it's hard to say. It's a little bit hard to believe that that we are here again. But yeah, I'm I'm really happy. But the freshly crowned champion doesn't take it easy in race two. Kish has a brilliant drive up from seventh on the grid to third. Then he attacks the young French driver Theo Calvet, who is currently in second position. For a few moments, they are side by side with a lot of contact. Calvet defends his position extraordinarily well. But nobody can stop Jochen Hahn from taking his third win of the season. After a tough championship, it's great to see the German driver back on the top step. <laughs> on the next day, Norbert Kisch celebrates a light to flag victory in race three, his 12th win of the season. In the final race of the 2021 season, Sasha Lenz has the best start. Steffi Hallam and Adam Lachko fight for position, but then heavy smoke comes out of Alia Kolos Freightliner. 
With only one lap remaining, the race director waves the red flags on track and all are called to an early checkered flag. Sasha Lentz wins the race and secures second place in the overall standings. Adam Lachko finishes the season in third place. The 2021 FIA European Truck Racing Championship season is in the books. It was not only a spectacular season, but also marked an important milestone in the history of the discipline. The FIA ETRC switched to 100% sustainable fuel, the HVO100 biodiesel, becoming the first FIA regulated competition to do so. HVO stands for hydro-treated vegetable oil and is a premium fossil-free diesel product made of 100% renewable raw materials. It's purely recycled, produced by hydro-treatment of vegetable oils and animal fats. It is produced and supplied by Total Energies. The HVO is produced from used plant oil. To explain the process of the production in a few words, after collecting those used oils, we do first a pre-treatment to get rid of all the pollutants. After that, the product that we obtain goes through a silo in which we spray all the fatty substance molecules with pressurized hydrogen. And this permits us to get a product that is the biofuel. Then there's the last step in which we introduce hydrogen in a way to stabilize the product and get a better resistance to the cold. The result is a premium quality fuel with a chemical structure nearly identical to regular diesel and that can be used in a regular combustion engine without the need for any modifications. Even more important, it does not release any new carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. We have a 65% reduction in comparison to fossil energy. The point is also to have a reduction of important particles and NOx. The 65% reduction is calculated from the well to the wheel, taking into calculation the greenhouse gas emission savings over the entire cycle, from the production of the primary fuel to the burning of the fuel in the truck. The HVO has a real green imprint without sacrificing performance. It feels the same exactly. I think if you didn't know what is in, I think you couldn't tell the difference because there is basically no difference. Uh, yeah, hopefully in the future we can even be more greener. After a successful and greener season, the ETRC is already the perfect role model for many other motorsports series around the world. The Hill Climb Masters in Braga, Portugal is the highlight of the season. The best of the best are at the start to compete on the legendary Rampa del Farpara race course. The Masters will bring together the winners of national championships recognized by the ASNs, as well as the winners of the FIA Championship, Challenge and Cup. Every driver has three runs on the three kilometer long high speed racetrack. Only the best run counts for the overall ranking. The battle for category and group honors rages up and down the field with thousands of enthusiastic Portuguese fans responding to the amazing driving skills shown by these drivers. In category three, Sarah Bernard of France finishes in her Seat Leon Cup racer in third place. She is the first female driver to bring home a medal in the history of the FIA Masters. But category three is dominated by Swissman Reto Meisel. In his Mercedes-Benz SLK 340, he has the fastest time in all three runs and relegates British driver Damien Bradley to second place. The gold medal in Category 3 belongs to Reto Maizo, Damien Bradley in second place, and Sarah Bernard in third. 
Category 1 is dominated by Polish drivers. After leading the first two races, Daniel Stawiarski in the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 9 improves his best time by one tenth of a second to 1 minute 14.709, a great final run by the Polish driver. His fellow countryman Mikhail Ratajczyk posted in the first two heats just the third best time. In the final run, he steers his Mitsubishi Lancer Evo XRS to his best time. In the end, he's almost three tenths of a second better than Staviarski and now has the best chance to win Category 1. But Simon Lukashik would like to have a say in the matter. In his Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 5, he set the second best time in both the first and second runs. Also, his third run with an average speed of 144 kilometers per hour was very fast. He kept his best run until the last one and posts a 1 minute 14.267 hundredths of a second to take gold and the overall win in the Touring Cars category. So it's an all Polish podium in Braga, a great day for the Polish hill climb community. The overall classification is dominated by category 2 and 4 cars. British driver Alex Summer steers his DJ Firestorm Cosworth with great driving skills to a fourth place finish overall and the silver medal in category 4, but Summers has no chance to intervene in the three-way fight for the first places. Simona Fagioli, number two, who has been in a battle with his eternal rival Christian Merley for the first place all season, has got another serious rival in Braga in Jeffrey Schatz. This time the Italian doesn't have his best race weekend. Although he manages to finish two heats under the time of one minute three seconds, he has to settle for third place finish overall. Jeffrey Schatz has a great weekend. In two heats, the French driver finishes with the best time, winning the gold medal for Category 4 and a very good and deserved second place overall. He only has to admit defeat to Christian Merley with the number one plate. At the wheel of his Osella FA30 Zytec LRM, the Italian delivers a magical drive in Heat 2, where he sets the fastest time of the entire race weekend to become the overall winner in Braga. In doing so, he impresses with an unbelievable performance with an average speed of over 172 kilometers per hour. He celebrates one of his greatest successes in international hill climb racing with another gold medal in Category 2 and the overall victory at the Hill Climb Masters in Braga. Christian Merley with the biggest win of the season. Jeffrey Schatz just 0.359 seconds behind him. Fagioli finishes in third. <laughs> Round four of the FIA World Cup for cross country rallies took place in Morocco. The Rallye du Maroc with five legs and 1,631 kilometers of selective sections is a tough one, but a beautiful challenge. The record-setting field of participants raced in the two most beautiful dune areas of Morocco. Three sand stages out of six days of racing offered between 30 and 40 kilometers of dunes. Nasser al Atiyah and Matthew Boimel took the victory to claim the lead in the FIA World Cup for cross-country rallies after a commanding drive saw them win five of the six selective sections. The Toyota Hilux crew, who now have six and seven Moroccan wins to their names respectively, finished 15 minutes and 58 seconds ahead of Yazid Al-Raji and Michael Orr in their Toyota Hilux overdrive. Their teammates Lucio Alvarez and Armand Monleon bring another Hilux home in third overall. The next stop for the FIA World Cup for cross-country rallies will be at the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. In the ADAC Formula 4, the battle for the title continued between championship leader Oliver Bierman and his closest rival Tim Tramnitz. With a win and a second place finish, the 16-year-old German driver managed to close the gap in the championship on Biermann to 23 points before the final race weekend at the Nuremberg Ring.
To describe Andrea Zivian in one word, you only have to look at his nickname, Zippo. <laughs> uh, you remember the lighting? Because uh, no, how he's me, okay? And they told me, Zivian, Zippo, in one second, turn on, okay? In car and also outside the car. <laughs> Zippo is an extroverted personality with an infectious positive charisma. The 49-year-old talks faster than he drives and doesn't hold back in showing his emotions. I have a lot of passion. I, I love the life, okay? And uh, um, I'm really lucky because uh, I can uh, decide of myself when I, I want to work, when I have time for me, for my life, for my daughter, and for uh, all of my passion. Zippo lives in Reggio Emilia in central Italy, manufacturing and selling jewelry. He was born close to Milan and his family loves the game of football, but he only found his true passion in his mid-twenties. I started when we was uh, 24 to, to hold, because in my family, uh, no one speak about the, the race of the car and uh, uh, all the family is only for the football, okay? I don't like the football, okay? I prefer the, the engine. So the rally for me is a big passion, okay? Um, we go outside from, the, from my mind, from the work or the normal life every day. When I drive in rally, it's totally different life. When I was in rally, it's in a cloud, okay? In the beginning, he drove regular rallies, up to a point where he realized that this was not going to get him any further along in his career. In 2010, I made the uh, 100 race in my career, and uh, I'm not that satisfaction because uh, for driving a modern car, you need only to have a big money, okay? I prefer the old style, because in the modern car, you need only a big van, the, the better car, okay? So I prefer drive. Zippo wanted to race the old school way, pure cars, pure driving. So he changed to the historic rally and chose a car, which presents a challenge in itself. When I started to, in, in the historic car in 2011, I want to check uh, to have one car that no one have, okay? So the Porsche is the majority car in the historic. I check, okay, uh, Audi is not in the historic, okay. There is not a, a lot of paper of this car. If you bought one uh, Porsche, you can choose from uh, a lot of spare parts and uh, uh, improvement car. In the Audi, no. So we make a lot of tests and check for improve this car. And uh, now we are right, because uh, this year we, we won the, the European Championship. After 10 years that we worked inside the car, but uh, it's a big satisfaction. It took 10 years to reach the goal, the European Historic Rally Championship title. And it made Zippo happy and hungrier for more. It was a very, very big goal, but it's only the start. It's not the arrival, because the next year, for sure, we will participate at the European Championship again and uh, I want every year to improve something of the car, of the championship, different race, so this is my life. Molorusa is a town in the countryside 130 kilometers west of Barcelona. Four champions will be crowned during this weekend. For the drivers of the Cross Car Academy, it's the second to last stop of the season. From the beginning, Spanish driver Gil Membrado and Dutch racer Nathan Otting can get a small lead ahead of the rest. It's the best race so far for Otting. The racetrack in Spain is very tricky and difficult. Too difficult for many drivers, but not for Membrado and Otting, who stay in front. In the end, they manage to pull away from the rest of the field. German driver Samuel Dreves manages to move up into third place with a great race.
Guillermo Brado wins in Molarusa, Nathan Ottink with a great second place finish, and Samuel Draves comes in third. Before the last stop at the Nürburgring, Guillaume Brado leads the overall standings with 123 points, Frenchman Etan Pepiol in second, and Belgian Victor Vranks is in third. In the cross car category, Frenchman David Mea leads the overall standings ahead of the last race of the season. At the start, he's in third position, but directly in front of him in the black cross car is one of his biggest rivals, Ivan Pina Chinchilla from Spain. He's only seven points behind and needs a win to make his chances of winning the title come true. But during his battle for first place with fellow Spanish driver Juan Jose Moll, Chinchilla crashes and the way is clear for David Mia. The French driver wins the race and the European title. Ivan Pina Chinchilla finishes second in the championship and the Frenchman Tristan Fauconnier secures third place with a second place finish in the race. In the junior buggies, the championship is firmly in Czech hands. Andre Medlik leads ahead of Daniel Putlion. But in the final in Molarusa, a young Czech drives into the limelight. Arnost Florian in the blue buggy takes the lead right from the start. He is only in his second year in junior buggies. Behind him, Medlik in the green buggy, Putlion in the pink buggy, and Safranek in the dark red buggy fight for podium spots. The second win of the season for Arnost Florian. Medlik finishes in second place and Putlion in third. Andre Medlik wins the European title, Daniel Putlion finishes in second place, and third goes to the Czech Jakob Safranek, completing the top three. Before the buggy 1600 final, Kevin Peters, number 110, is only one point behind Timo Paler in the green buggy. Both competitors start on the left-hand side. Kevin Peters immediately takes the lead, right behind him is Timo Paler. An exciting duel for the title, which will also be fought hard, but fairly in the next laps. Then Paler manages to pass Peters on the inside, but the Luxemburger immediately counters with a fantastic inside pass of his own. Paler keeps up the pressure and Peters makes the mistake. In the hairpin, he gets stuck on the inside while drifting. The field passes and the title dreams are over. Timo Paler takes second behind Thomas Christol, but that is enough to become European champion. Kevin Peters finishes second in the championship and Jakob Novotny is in third place. It's similarly exciting with the super buggies. Florent Tafani is only two points ahead of Erwin's Grenches. At the start, they're right next to each other. Tefani on the left, Grenches on the right. But the latter wants it a bit too much. First, he drives into the rear end of the Frenchman and then into the wall. The title race for Grenches is over before it's really begun. After the early exit of his toughest rival, Florent Tefani controls the field from the front. The Frenchman drives towards a sure victory and with it the European title. The Czechs David Horak and Peter Bartos finish the race in second and third positions respectively. Florent Tafani ends the season the way he started it, at the top of the podium. 
Florent Tafani is the new European champion, Gorenchus finishes second, and Jakub Kubicek is in third place. That's it for today. On the next episode of FIA Pure Motorsport, it becomes exotic and we'll travel into the desert for the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. We'll race on the dusty roads of the Rwanda Mountain Gorilla Rally and e-rally through the wonderful Monte Carlo. Till next time, take care everybody and ciao.